p.m. Okay. okay, let's see what we got here. Um, approved meeting minutes. Everybody should have gotten the meeting minutes in Ted's, um, and if, if you are present, you probably have in front of you. Uh, any changes or any commentary on the meeting minutes? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that my vote no on the wall had nothing to do with the wall, it had to do with the location. Good. Heard you loud and clear, we get you. Um, all right, so any uh, um, motion to approve these minutes? So moved. Seconds? Second. All right, all those in favor of meeting minute approval, please say aye. 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 Yeah, take attendance. Uh, all right, so for attendance purposes, we have to uh, go through this because you guys are on Zoom. So uh, when I call your name, just uh, say here. Uh, Allison Bryan? Here. Julie Rollins? Here. Uh, Jeff Hartwell? Here. John McMahon? Here. John DiLorenzo? Here. And Tim Bernicker is here. Okay. So and then we need a vote. There's a motion to vote on this now. Roll call vote for the um, minutes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So now the uh, the meetings have been motioned and seconded. So now let's say uh, Allison. Uh, if, uh, all aye. Those in favor, aye. Yes. Yeah, sorry. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. John. Aye. aye. Jeff. Yep. Yeah. Jack. Uh, yes. I vote aye. Right. You guys, I'm, I'm so sorry I missed that. I think because I'm not there for the approval of the last meeting minutes. It was moved by whom and seconded by whom? Uh, Jack. Jack and John. Jack. That's made the motion, John. Second, right? John, thank you so much. It's hard for me to tell who's speaking. Thank you so much. All right, good project update. So I guess I know Julie, you had a question about town meeting. Uh, so it's probably if you guys, I can probably go through the. I went through the warrant yesterday with um, Michelle uh, from Monday night, and we just briefly go over. You guys don't have it in front of you, but um, Article Four was approved and allocated fifteen thousand dollars for a playground in Paris, which is for Beachwood and the hundred, a hundred story street uh, for us. Uh, Ten thousand for uh, cracking, seal, you know, seal crack for tennis courts, and five thousand dollars for a new field break for Milliken, which is more for uh, the having issues. I think it's going to be a shorter one where. They could do the, the big end field, but they were getting they couldn't do the, the base pass from home to first and third to home. So I think that's a, I think that's what they're aiming for is to be to rake that and with a small rake. Um, so that was Article Four. Article Five that got approved for capital improvements included another thirty thousand dollars for activitas to further study Millican and maybe our wall, you know, here. Uh, another $30,000 for Beachwood Playground Paris. But um, they're going to, according to them, they're, not, they're going to try not to use that until the fall time, until springtime meeting, the major part of the project. And then they set aside another $100,000 for developing field dust from concessions. Too late the fall. So I talked to Jeremy today. There, there was a meeting next week with Jeremy. The architect Teriyaki's, um, Brian Joyce, Michelle. The goal is to have them put the bathroom in the present place, mm -hmm. in the present meeting. So there's going to be a meeting next week where they finalize all the details of the plumbing, the sewer. They're going to start, they're going to move on, they're going to take out their storage shed and put it inside baseball. Mm -hmm. Baseball's okay. To, so, the, um, so where this present storage shed, the, the bigger piece will be the bathrooms. Um, we might not be ready for the spring, so we might have four bodies for you know the spring season until it's all done. But Jeremy's hoping they can maybe break ground after the meeting next week because the money's all there now. So it should you know the plan is to get it done. So um, <clears throat> Article Six, Community Preservation, the Library Amphitheater, which you guys have a little copy of, and I know it's online. I think went through. They did hold off on the uh, fifteen thousand for the cross wall and the Beachwood Playground. $240,000 so they're going to do an annual town meeting. I think they're just going to, they want to get all the estimates. They, it was, none of the estimates were done officially yet. So it's part of the $30,000 they asked for for more money to have activists officially give a, give a quote. I don't think there was ever a real 
estimate. There's just a ballpark we sent to it. So they're going to locate it, budget it, and then springtime meeting will approve it. And then the field study was was that the full amount for the field study, or was that they had fifty thousand? Now they're asking for another third. Okay. To, to finish. But th so this is the but this gets to that second round. Yeah, I guess they well they need more money. I think to, to finalize that wall and and anything at milk at, at um, milk and field. I did hear it today from Jeremy. <clears throat> I know we talked a few of a few guys about the spot of Salabander in the you know the end of Bearcroft Way <clears throat> where the original parking lot they were talking about doing was to the right. You go down Bearcroft Way that little one way mm -hmm. and go to the parking lot there. And I forget it was Ron Ford that mentioned how the original one I feel project that field of turf field was supposed to be all the way parallel to, to Millicent for the beautiful bridge, I guess, that was a design. And then they found conservation found wetlands and an endangered spotted salamander. So that's why alumni got pushed back to the front. Um, so the latest plan from Jeremy told me it's like a parking lot's gonna come off of Pleasant Street up and build a parking lot next to the what the um, the water tank. <laughs> that's news to me. Um, so that's a pretty small driveway to solve, but that's that's probably where the thirty thousand dollars they need more for. Yeah, building yeah. a parking lot up there. So sixty-six million. Hey, hey, Ted, Ted, could you please um, repeat again why the fifteen thousand for the lacrosse wall uh, didn't wasn't part of the revised warrant? Didn't have a didn't have a real estimate and real specs. So it would just go, and, they, and I think David Gunn agreed, just go towards, they were going to do it between now and the fall, and now in April anyways. So they're getting a full spec, full estimate to present to CPC for, top, for spring time meeting. Okay, and um, there was a bit of a misunderstanding because Dave and Matt Belson came to the town meeting expecting that to go through. They were not notified in advance that this would, was dropped from the warrant. Uh, were they notified afterwards, and that's when they said, "Okay, we understand. We need real specs." I don't know. Okay, it, it was it was pretty uncomfortable at the town meeting. I really felt for them, and they were looking at me in the audience, saying, "Why was this dropped?" <laughs> and I said, "I had no idea. You should have been notified. I would have thought you would have been notified." But they well, were they were taken off guard, and they left. And the playground thing changed. Too, right? They left abruptly. Those... Oh, sorry. oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, they left abruptly. And then uh, the playground, um, how much was that? That was for a lot more. And that was dropped. But I was confused. Not, by dro what... not dropped. They just said, you know, what? With, with the big thing that they usually keep the big money items they usually keep to until the spring time meeting. Oh. That's the tradition that big items and that lacrosse wall is it just 15? It's 100,000 for sure. Turfing around it. Oh, I didn't know we were doing the the turf all around it. That's what, yeah, that's what's part of the plan that they presented was a turf around the um, the wall. So, so that's one of the things that they do push their back big up my names to the spring, and uh, both those projects were totally farmed out. I think Beachwood hasn't right officially been scoped out. Okay, the lacrosse Maybe. wall and the original yeah. warrant only said fifteen thousand. So I I guess. Something came in afterwards to let them know it would be 115. They actually talked at our meeting last month. It's right up to the shell. Yeah. 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 They need 100,000 for the tarp, too. Yeah. But, but I didn't know that's what they were asking for. I didn't know that. I didn't get the feeling from Dave that that's what they were asking for. I would have put that in the minutes. I'm sorry. I, I didn't. That wasn't clear to me. I thought they were only asking for 15. Michelle, I had Michelle read your minutes actually yesterday to make sure that because she went through the, the video. Yeah, and your minutes were, were, were right on. Oh, Jeff, I know you, I mean, you did. Um, you checked into walls. I mean, 50, what is the? Do you get any pricing at all from some of the things you looked at? Um, yeah, I mean, it was a few years ago, so whatever they come up with from the study is fine. If it, it, the ones I looked at were more like thirty, which was a little surprised that it was fifteen. Yeah. Um, but so who who actually puts it on the town meeting for a spring? But it's gonna well. It goes. I think it's all automatically gonna go. But um, well, once they get all the, the real numbers, but it's just like so it goes. Warren, like Michelle would put it on. 
and it's, it'll either go capital budget or CPC. It looks like it's going to go CPC because that's the way it went this time. And your understanding is it'll go on for right. yeah. hundred or whatever the cost. Yeah, whatever, whatever activity comes off. back. Right. So, uh, and I think the yeah, Beecher playground is you know, still working on a few other things like the, you know, port in place robber versus you know wood chips. So, so that's it for evening. No, was not there. I have to confess, I was not there, so I okay. can't make any commentary. No, it was news to me about the new driveway up. up. Towards the water tank. Crazy. Now, obviously, avoided the slides out of the because it must still be there. Um, any other questions about it? I mean, I, I did talk to Jeremy today. He, he's he thinks that he might we need to put a price for the first part of the spring, but he says they could break ground after next week's meeting. I think they're going to invite us too. I don't, you know, it'll be next meeting next week with water what they, sewer. What did they give for a number for that for that article five? What was the uh, for, for the other Another hundred thousand. Yep. We're gonna go, right? Talk about the shack. Eight years. You're gonna name it for Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Jack Shack. You're gonna name it for Jack Shack. <laughs> I think that building's <laughs> actually still the Larry Schultz building. Uh, if I remember correctly. He's already, he's already his name was on that building. Yesterday's news. Yeah. <laughs> We've moved on. Um, I think that's you know, wouldn't have a good idea. Not that you know, Jeremy's happy. Jeremy's looking forward to moving forward. Uh, he's hoping they can break ground for the water and sewer. And then, like I said, they talked to baseball and they're going to move a lot of the storage stuff to the baseball. So, um, next thing on the agenda is just a Thanksgiving Day wrap up. Um, I'm still waiting for a few numbers. I haven't had a chance to go through uh, the what registered, then the, the drop is. You know, we, I think it was a great day. I mean, it was one of the best weather days I think we've had in a while. Um, when I shut off the online registration at 4.30, we were at 761. So I was, Ron Ford and I were pretty sure that we we're going to hit 1,000 for the first time. And that, it's always been our goal to hit 1,000. We were, we were pretty sure we were going to hit 900, but we had probably the slowest walk-in day ever with just 60 people coming in the day of to register. It's usually 100 to 150 that come the day of, you know, either from the Legion directly or <laughs> but um, so you know that was a little disappointing. So we had 825 official registrants. Um, six Wait, times six have? short of a record. Yeah, yeah. Where do we normally have the day of? Or well, we averaged. If you look at that, yeah, up, this, that, up top, the second, third, third row down, register versus finish. Eight thirty. Yeah, and then, and then we like oh, okay. And we do think, I, I do think there's a lot of, <laughs> we had a lot more non registered finance this year than actually maybe the 60 people that showed up the month, the day, you know, that day out. Because we, I mean, we had a lot of people, like we had, you know, one of my pet peeves is making sure we get the top three men, top three women. And the top woman that came in wasn't even a real runner. Yeah, I just missed that. <laughs> And I just <laughs> Katie, Katie got nipped out of by, by just yeah uh, by a like thirteen year old girl yeah. <laughs> no just, 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 just Rosie Ruiz <laughs> yeah we did we had a girl that finished first and she's just running away we're chasing her and she didn't have a bit good luck and so she's like oh that was great I'm gonna go home now right. no, no, she she ran in again she went looking for Brian Joyce is Brian Joyce's niece Brian Joyce the project manager for the town oh, she went running back on the course to find them uh, and then that. Did lead to our first. We actually did have one little error with the uh, so the top three men finished, and then she came so quickly. I went looking for her, and then top three men went to get their their ties and their medals, and we didn't have a chance to check for Spitler to see because number three, and number four came in right behind yeah, each other. Right, so, yeah. Number four finished before number three officially by time, but he so he missed a high medal all uh, because we didn't have a chance to double check. Because we're chasing um, not the illegal female that came in first. So, I mean, I did talk to Spittler because sometimes when I was used to be in Hingham, it used to take an hour to get through all of the records, and people would sit around for the Fourth of July race waiting for an hour, and everyone left. Spittler did tell me that they could quickly tell us, you know, right away. Yeah, yeah number four was because what happened was number four obviously was further back, but then he, he, he crossed the, the starting line right. and the finish line. He's net time. Yeah, that time was better than number three. Um, 
go find number three and go get that pie back. Yeah. <laughs> he ate it right there. I'm not yeah. sure about that. He knew. He knew he, he, knew he, he was, was just just wrong. wrong. He's like, I got one. And number, you know, number one, he, he, he just he came close to breaking the record. Uh, he joked that he was, he was like 15 seconds off the record from the kids of Pembroke they're married one year. We're chasing each other. Pony Adams won the album. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this was the you know, first time Charlie Kaufman lost that oh, race. But um, he's actually a Kwasa guy, new to town, first time running. Uh, Ron Ford's after him to be the next track in Cross Country Coach. Because he, he was a national champion runner from Stanford. He's 20 years ago because he's 39. He's actually one of the older ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, so, <laughs> but we had, um, you know, I started to do the breakdown for, I had to add the late registrations to our file uh, to do the breakdown for, you, for kids and adults. Um, these numbers are unofficial, but we're looking at over 20,000 plus 21,000 for running money. Running money. We're, you know, close to 7,000 for our sponsors. So, it was one of our, it was our highest registration day. Um, and then I listed the expenses that we have to date. There's no more expenses out there. We, I just, I had to get the confirm, please fill, but that should be it. So that went up considerably a thousand dollars more. But, um, you know, so once we confirm the dollar amounts, it looks like we have a, um, a margin of $50,000, which means, you know, $7,500 each for, for China to fund the NUS. I did do a breakdown, so we obviously need to talk about, you know, thousand dollars more for us. Uh, these details is something we should think about for next year. Our rates that we have, I do have it here that for 2025, 2530, and usually I do the the breakdown just two weeks before the race. Um, raise the price five dollars. So, you know, I try to look around other towns what they charge, but when I look around afterwards, it's, it's all the registrations are down. Um, I see some towns charging forty dollars a day of. Which doesn't make sense for change. What are, and what are we? We're just thirty, either twenty-five or thirty. Okay. So we have one. We have, we start registration October first at twenty and twenty-five. And then usually two weeks before the race, we go twenty-five thirty. We could we could move that up November first. Do um, an October price, and then we should do a great day of race fee. Um, Most places do. Yeah, a little bit higher. Um, so I did for your sakes, if you want to. You know, we all you know, we talked about donating some money to Beechwood, so I want to wait till we get our finances in order. We did have a balance in the first you know, eleven thousand dollars before the race this year. Um, plus, we should make you know the 70, 7500 or so on our side. Um, there are some expenses I need to account for before. Unfortunately, all our money comes in November online, so it doesn't show up in our account until December first. I do need to commit to the track and field. The shirts, the race timers, uh, and if we decide to go with new medals, you know. So I need, I do need about eleven thousand dollars in our account in the summer to, to do POs to do the, the introductory parts of the race. Uh, I did estimate it's about fifty thousand dollars on the race, you know, based on these numbers, based on what like getting water, um, you know, just some of the payroll that we do of our staff. So it costs us fifty thousand dollars on the race, basically. Uh, so it's a good number to know. Ahead of time, and, uh, and I'll start playing with the numbers a little bit of what how to cut how to account for the extra thousand dollars for police detail. Uh, and we can talk about you know next next meeting because they do want me to fold the permit early next year, like in the spring, just for the Thanksgiving. So it's, you know, which is fine. Um, and then I guess the next thing on the in your packet is I was going to start cutting these things out because it was used to be just for kids. But the adults all wanted up, and we've gone through a lot over the years. So, Tim and Ron, I mean, you guys all agree that, um, that I actually gave one to Paul Barry because it was, it was 80 years old. And, um, I said, I'll give this to you as long as you promise this is your last race. Yeah. <laughs> so, or bring it next year. Yeah. So, you know, I got pricing on, you know, the same metal, and I, I originally got pricing for 5000 but then realized that's way too much for PO to pay. And then, you know, if for some reason, if, we do the race ourselves, then I don't want to buy 5,000 if it's just a recreation run and not if the China fund ever changes. You know, I want to, you should not want to spend five years out. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I asked for a thousand because that's probably the safe bet. Let's get a thousand. I even offered to have our staff put a little sticker on that says 2023 because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want them to grade that because I want to use them 
right. for, for next year. So, so I have some pricing here. It works out to about twenty two hundred dollars every year to get these one thousand finisher medals. And I guess I'd like to know what your opinions on it because we move forward. I did ask for a new. Um, I'm not a big fan of the red, white, and blue. No offense, but for Thanksgiving. So in your packet here is the, um, the next page is a cross and rec uh, thin one. You know, that would that'd be pretty. We got, we got brand new ones for the first, second, third. So they're beautiful with the town seal that we gave up this year. But this would be, this new lanyard here would be for mm -hmm. all these guys. And our staff would do these too. We put them on to we'll save some money because the rec center kids can do it when they're yeah. sitting down there in September, October. So I guess the question is, what do you, you know, what are your, what are your thoughts? Definitely think the other ribbons, the new ribbons better. Yeah. I mean, the question is, do you guys, do you guys want to give up finish metal, finish your medals? I know the kids love them. And then the problem is like I even stopped person this year being the bad guy saying this is just for kids. So and a lot of people are upset. I thought it was understood it. that it was just for kids. It I used to be. It, it did it the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah, the last couple of years the adults have been wanting. So interesting. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, I you know, most I think most races, if you finish a, a race, you get it, right? Yeah. I mean, do you yeah. Any race or road race? Oh, marathon, on marathon. Look, at, oh, look yeah. at them longingly every <laughs> do that in 38, 45. What a day. So I got to eat them anyways. I mean, because obviously for the kids, right, I mean, so the kids, the kids' numbers are usually. Um, but is it going to be more expensive for us to put these together ourselves? No, because what I'll do is I'll have uh, in September and October next year when that staff is down the rec center, yeah, and even the kids downtown. Yeah, so, yeah, just yeah, but don't these good. numbers add up to? Uh, I think about twenty two hundred. Don't these add up to like twenty two hundred? And didn't we pay? Well, I guess we paid. Twenty-two fifty, right? Or am I reading this correct? Oh no, sorry, that's twenty twenty-three. That was your estimates. Yeah, okay, that's see, when we first got them. I want to say, see that two thousand number in yeah. two thousand eighteen. Yeah, that's the number. That's the medal. So we got for the kids. Okay, that's and they number. lasted us until twenty twenty-two. Yeah. Okay. So, so the question is, I mean, I'm okay with it. So we can we can do fun, some financing, like raising the price number first. You can get a metal sponsor. Yep. So it gives you two thousand dollars for metals. Yep. Let me on. Yeah, you can bring, you can publicize the fact that they have the metal sponsor. Yep. yep. It's by Kennedy Garden Center. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go the other way and need someone to tell the adults that they don't need this, <laughs> <and> <laughs> get, it's all oh, Jeff, you look very official. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> you look very official at the race. I, I look at Jack. It's like, it's like a Secret Service agent. <laughs> with dark side glasses. Get the hat, it's got the earpiece. <laughs> yeah. I'll put my hand up for that. Um, okay. And that's the second race. Yeah, I mean, you guys, happy you guys were there, happy you guys are running. Any um, suggestions, changes? Um, I do think we would have, yeah, you know, we were missing a lot of signage that we're typically used to. Um, I look, you know, that JJ sign facing south. Mm -hmm. The big orange one that Lilia Cecilio said yes to, it, we never got put out. Um, and that's it's that such a crowd. The one that was at Forest Ave going towards the dump, it just wasn't put out this year. So, you know, we I asked two or three times, I just wasn't too sure why it wasn't up. Um, it, it benefits us because it would have been getting one at the Beachwood, the playground. So, uh, there's a town wants us to do. So, I mean, I'll work hard. I'll find out why. I'm just, you know, if it's an issue. I mean, there's more and more signage going around now with speed signs, and so I hope they get more of those. Um, I, I, the one thing I looked at, you know, my brother-in-law. There's a lot of applicate, a lot of road races. You see this on the elevation climb, mm -hmm. on a course. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to get my brother-in-law to not have his time, <laughs> but have like where the mile markers are. So if any of you guys know, if you, you know, after you got that, that's Garmin, like yeah, I, I, this would be cool to have on our website. Or even, I see that Hingham actually had it on the application. Of course, Hingham was straight. This this is unreal. Yeah. And this is this you is know, a tough one. This is a tough yeah. So it's good for people to know. I think it's like it's you know mm -hmm. this is it's still missing a little bit. Actually, it's missing the, the, the up beach went out. It's making a little white. Yeah, but no, I want I need I need one that has the miles. 
and not his time. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have ever seen this when you're running you know, on the running days, how to get a reading like this without time, but half mile, mile, so people know where it is. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about doing is more. But, but they're not going to reference. That. No, it's just cool to have on the, on the website. Okay. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be. <laughs> One minute. <laughs> no, I to be. Um, we definitely <laughs> want to. <laughs> so we, that's why I have to watch. <laughs> yeah. We want to make more. Um, we have better signage at the shoots too. We're going to try to get. That just gets really crazy. So we're going to work on some signage that our staff can hold up. Uh, I'm here to win. I'm here to walk. You know, just holding signs up and get people in a straight line. Um, so I got a bunch of different, you know, and then uh, just also the spill that people said, if we can try to get, there's too many people cluster at the end. And uh, even our nurse was like, this is a little too much. So we got to get people to walk further out and then leave right, right oh, now. Like when you finish. Yeah, right now you finish, you go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just extend the yeah. And, yeah. That, and that way there's Kelly with in the water and then metals, and then you get out. Um, cause if we have had an emergency, it, it would be crazy in there. So, um, so that's one thing we want to work on. Um, we want to add music, you know, I'll wait till seven o'clock just play so the neighbors don't hate us. But, um, I know it was actually some random person that had their music playing at the finish line towards the end, at the mm -hmm. very end. It wasn't, it wasn't us. And it's kind of cool. You yeah. know, someone yeah. had music playing, um, uh, medical tent and the, talk about the price detail, um, and then deciding on unofficial runners. If, I mean, a lot of races don't let them through without a dip. Oh, right. Do we, I mean, that's the thing. Do we, if, do we have staff say, okay, where's your bib? If there's no bib, just push them back to the, well, to the dogs <laughs> at the very far end. Uh, so, I mean, so, you know, some ideas that we talked about after the race. So, uh, are dogs allowed to run? Oh, no, they're not supposed to. And even, I, I'm fine with it either way. I was just curious. They should be further, further back. They shouldn't go through, I mean, it should be the last, like I call it, if we do, if we, if I make these signs up, I call them the unofficial furry, furry runners will be the last one at the very end. So they're down by the church at the very far end. They, they all line up there and just go at the very end. So, and it was fine. It was funny more than anything, but I kid you not, one of the front runners had their dog with them and literally in the middle of the street in the very beginning. Pooped and she was trying to clean it up with a bag and like runners were running around her and the dog was losing its mind. And it was, it was exactly. Oh, it's not good. another three miles to go. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of this. And I love dogs. I'm, I'm glad people were running with their dogs. I was just curious. So. Officially US track and field, we should not have dogs or strollers. The Many license that we have. Say that. Many of them. Yeah. Many of them. So. And then and that's just where really go to the shoots. So I don't know if you, I mean, we, we have these last couple of categories. The, uh, I'm walking, I'll be home in an hour. I mean, that's like, I mean, still categories here. That he's like 12 different signs. Uh, yeah, strollers, I could not find a babysitter. So uh, we have two one year olds. We have two one year olds and all very the 80, 80 year olds. So we went from one to eight. That's so, um, that's a race recap. I did. I do have the winter brochure that we're going to get to Dave Bark on Monday. So there's still. Um, I, guess I always ask you if you guys see a, a spelling mistake or a typo, let me know. Uh, I'm sorry, Allison and Julie, I forgot. Do you guys have any questions? Nope. nope. I'll unpack a few guys if you want to swing by tomorrow. So. Yeah, that would be great. I'll swing by and grab a packet so it can help me with the minutes. Sure. Um, so a couple of things with the winter brochure. Um, my goal is to have the health of health of fair in March. I gotta do, I gotta figure out a way of, and this is where Alice and Julie can chime in. Um, and Katie. I mean, I want to have the health of rec fair, but the online registration that we've been doing for playground is so much better than us, than Jen and I inputting a thousand applications. So the question is, how do we get people to health of rec fair? But still registered that day. Um, I was thinking about doing a later registration, but in our profession, the later registrations get more awkward because parents might be watching a game and having a beer or a cocktail, and then the registrations just go right to. <laughs> we have a lot of issues. Yeah, most nice. most towns do eight o'clock and six o'clock registration. Can we do one? So we could do a registration of one, and hopefully people come afterwards. Hey, no, you've done all the last Extreme. Uh, Thursday night. 
Playground registration. What, what did you do for playground last year? Last three years before One. COVID, we did one o'clock on Sunday. Sunday. Yes. So we go there and staff be on there and start calls in and manage. <clears throat> Tuesday, it's been pretty quiet, but I got to find a way of getting people to the health of that fair. But so, but you know, and so come the fair. Yeah. Um, I thought about having a coupon code. I, re I reached out to our, our company that does the registration and they said, yeah, you have a coupon code, that's all the same code. So like, hey, you can come up, you can get a coupon code to call your friends, say, don't come, here's a coupon code. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm okay with one o'clock and then people just come up afterwards and complain if they didn't get into two sessions or was on a wait list. And... Is it be because they, what's their reasoning, I guess? Well, they came to the rec fair because they had to register. Like this is before life was born. We used to have a line out the door from Deerhill all the way to Oscar. So you had to physically go. See, they drop off an envelope. Okay. Um, they got everybody there. They were there all day. It was awesome. But now, ever since COVID, that online thing works. We can't stop it. I mean, I don't want, right. I'd love to have people do it, but. I'm like, please don't. No, it's, it's the best way because people have to download their visualizations and photos. Yeah. Uh, I do think we could skip the second step that we did last year where, of course, I just forgot the immunization of photos unless we tell people to do it before registration. And then they paid for everything they got the day of instead of us chasing them two weeks later. So I gotta figure out we'll talk about that because I want I want to get your opinions, yeah. you know, Julie and Allison about how we should do it. The second step is always us chasing people for sometimes a month for asking the, them for a second payment. To finish. Oh yeah. yeah, why was it separate? Because we didn't know how we're gonna do, especially after COVID, you know, one session or two. Oh. So uh, but we can I think we get you guys together and just figure out a way of doing it. Uh, the one thing that I reached out to, I talked to Mary Goodwin. Yeah. She's not a fan of having Health and Rec Fair, both for COVID reasons and I think just to reimagine it. Um, so I, re I Linda Fechner was in my office from, I don't know if any of you guys know Linda. Um, she's a big uh, farmer's market person. Yes, she is. And she's on a big, she's on a state association and she's actually like a co person for healthy components of health. Like, no, Mrs. Macro set, no, set up, sorry. But, um, so she's like a health piece. So I asked her, I said, do you want to be, get involved? And she's all got involved. Do an indoor mm -hmm. farmer's market at our, in the Deer Hill cafeteria in place of all the health stuff that Mary did. Right. I mean, ideally we get Mary, Julie Collins at the high school is offered to have a table mm -hmm. you know, for nursing. And I'm gonna, if I should sit down with Mary, I said, Mary, we're gonna do this because I have a thousand health and welfare bags over across the office in 2020 because we restocked all those people with bags to give out to people. We have 500 pairs of sunglasses. We have a fifty hundred dollars commitment to tables and chairs that we can carry over, but we can't get a refund for. It just they let, let us carry over the tables and chairs. So we have over ten thousand invested to have to have it. Otherwise, we lose it. I know what we're going to do with a thousand, you know, a thousand bags. Let's say health and rec fair. Ideally, we do it this year. I got you know, I asked Linda for some help with the promo when she wrote down health and farming, but then I pointed out that she missed us. But she calls it health. It sounds like a great name, but it doesn't include recreation. Um, I even have deposits left over from her vendors from 2020 that people said, I'll just carry over next year with the district attorney wants to come and do stuff. Um, so, I mean, I would like to do it. You guys have any reservations? And I just have to tell Mary that we're going to do it with or without her, but I don't mind if we get Linda doing the, the cafeteria. Which is the biggest thing, and she's giving all healthy vendors um, that would provide stuff that's good for them. We also have a, uh, a National Honor Society kid, Charlie Lacko, who's going to do a um, used sports sale. So we, we used to do them ourselves, and then he came to me as a National Honor Society project. So he's going to do all the work January, February, March, and then he's going to have either the, 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 the two rooms up there we use the band room and the, and the chorus room. He'll take over one of those rooms and have a used a use sports sale. For kids to, you know, to recycle equipment. Cool. He's actually reaching out to soccer lacrosse baseball saying, I'm doing this. Don't, you know, don't you do it. Because we were going to do it last year, but then all of a sudden baseball and soccer did one. Mm -hmm. I was like, so we dropped it. But this would be a for a project. It'll be, the money will be donated to Social Service League, which also take care of food pantry. Uh, so he's doing it for a good cause. And any leftover equipment, if you don't want it, want it he's going to give to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Boston, I think. So. so. So that's another piece. And then even the, the 143 clothing exchange, they're gonna take a wrong and do a you know clothing exchange again. So we know we can pull it off. I just want to get your blessing before, you know, 
to do it and then when we'll is it to be done? Sunday, March 26th. So that'll be the day of the registration for summer camp, but it'll also be the rec rec. But okay. I usually try to do it before spring sports really goes crazy. Yeah. Um, and basketball ends because we need to do a whole gym from Friday to Sunday to set up all tables and chairs. I just want to run it by get your blessing before we so it's camp registration, not extreme registration. And then you would have to end up doing the food for the, the yep. healthy food. And then you have this when these sports day will be pretty good. I mean, that's gonna have uh, I don't care. Sell the sell this. Yeah, because I actually I found some old notes and that was the busiest it's ticket by sale. Far the busiest well, thing. Plus it's March 30th, the deadline for our six. Right. So cool. So stickers, yeah, beach. Uh, beach stickers. So people come for the beach stickers. Expire on the thirty first of March. So like three days ahead of time to buy. I fourteen. I think I'm not going to say seven. Either fourteen or seventeen thousand dollars in business that day. Uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I, was, I remember it. I was in line for twenty minutes. Uh, Ted, a couple of clarifying questions. Uh, the woman right. who would be managing the farmers market piece. Her name is Linda. F-E-C-H-T-E-R. F-E-C-H-T-E-R? Yes. Thank you. And um, also, can you mention, I, I heard you say, Ted, something about this idea of having a coupon voucher, perhaps, offered at the rec fair that people could use later on in the day when they're registering for rec camp, maybe for a discount. And why is that not possible? It kind of sounds like a great idea. Well, it wouldn't be a discount. You can't afford that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there'd, no, be, there'd, be a, there'd be a code to get into the playground registration, but they can only do one code. So like, like Julie, you could, you could show up at one o'clock at the code and all of a sudden call Alice and Casey, don't bother coming, I get the code. Uh, I, I that, you guys know it, but I don't have to tell anyone else, but it's also the, the parents are sitting around seeing and realizing it's all the same code. You're all going to do it. I think we should keep it at one o'clock, um, even though it hurts us at the beginning of the health and rec fair. I mean, I, I was thinking of doing it at four so that way parents could come to the rec fair and ask us questions. Absolutely. I mean, so you're exactly. still going to do the online registration? Yes. Okay. So the question is do we do it at one and then have nobody show up? Or like, I've been thinking about doing it at four. Yeah. Have the people come to the rec have fair. Everybody come and say, go home and do this in one hour. Go get, get home yep. and do this. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for coming. And I gave you, I answered all your questions. Oh, yeah. You know, we're splitting it. We, the reason new people in town. Yep. The reason why we do two two set sessions is you know this and this, and yep. want to give everybody a chance, and then they figure it out. And and you can explain the process to them. Oh, yeah. If you know the next door neighbor has been like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just, but now you can actually explain yeah. that to them, and then they can go home at four o'clock and knock it out. And we could actually do it right here. I mean, on, on this page here, on the page about playground registration, yeah. we could actually register the open house for new families. We'll just change that to Sunday, March twenty seventh, seven o'clock. Okay. Yeah. You guys like Julie and Allison, you like the idea of doing a four o'clock registration and have people come to the fair, ask all the questions they have, then just go home? Um, I like that idea. I, I was, before that idea came up, I was just going to ask if you could do registration at one and then just start the fair in person a little later, maybe at two o'clock. And the reason I was thinking that is because everyone registers in that first hour anyway, and then it's full. <laughs> Actually, the first five, first five minutes. First five minutes. Yeah, I was being generous. So by two, they're done. You could just put the fair on at two o'clock. But do you all think it makes more sense to have the fair first and then have registration later in the day? I like Tim's idea about having parents, you know, having a, we could find any, I could find a rum. And people, because, you know, Tim, right, there's a lot of new people. Last year, it was one of the highest percentage of new residents we've ever seen. We're going to see a huge increase when the 2020 babies are five, all oh, hundred of them. Um, so it's going to, every year we're going to have new, new people. So yeah, you know, I, do, I do like the idea we could have a like a little fun session and you know introduce you know I will say Kate Daly has retired. Oh, you're looking for a new director, so it'd be a way to introduce a new director at the rec fair too. Uh, so. So, I mean, we could do a couple of little things and have, and we can have a lot of senior staff there. And then the good news about that is then we can go down to the office at four and just handle any phone, not, any crazy phone calls when they, because it will be good for them to, we can actually have people come in and we get laptops. And if they don't know their password, we can change a form between one and four. And then they just run home at four o'clock. So, hmm. 
So I do like, you know, I do like the idea of having it forward just so we, so parents can come in, ask questions. We can reset passwords while we're there, meet the new director, all the directors. Hopefully, I'll get all my coordinators there for high fives and all that's good. And then parents can ask questions. So. And you would be able to get from the fair to be answering phones with frantic. Oh, yeah, yeah we, you know, we usually have a lot of national society kids and a lot of staff that does all the, I, I don't want to break down 100 tables of chairs. So, okay, so you can just walk away and. Yeah. We make all the high school kids helping. do all the heavy lifting. Okay. Uh, okay. So, and I mean, Jenna could go down and some of the staff could go down and I could help break everything down. So um, there's already so many phones in the office anyway, so. But we should be able to answer all the questions. Between, I think that's great. I mean, get in there, answer all the questions. Uh, okay. I do have a, I do have a draft of the extreme schedule here. Uh, I'm still working on a. Um, we had some issues with Six Flags last year, so it fits in perfectly on three day week that July Fourth uh, week. So I'm in negotiations with them now, but pretty much the entire rest of the schedule is ready to go. We're trying a few new trips this year. Uh, this place in Malta called Bodeboard. Um, we're trying the new Nova, the Plymouth Nova Trampoline Park. And um, my goal of taking the train all the way to Worcester to watch the Woo Sox game is in, in progress. Of, um, the kids will take the train from Coasset. We did it for Fenway. We'll take the train from Coasset. The kids get drop, dropped off at Coasset, took the train to South Station, and then they did jump off at Fenway. This, they'll be on the same train going all the way to Worcester. So only about an hour and 10 minutes, you know, it's not bad. Um, get to Worcester by 11.30, watch the, walk over to the game a half hour and catch the 12 o'clock game and take the three o'clock train back. So it's like an 8.30 to six o'clock day total. Now the kids there before the train gets there. So it's something I've been aiming to do for a couple of years now. I just, it's a lot better to take a train to Worcester than a bus. They should, you know, I don't want to take a coach and at least trains have bathrooms. <laughs> so we'll give, we'll give it a shot. I mean, that's what, that's what our goal is. Um, you know, we'll plan for 96 kids a week, you know, all those weeks. So registration is Thursday the 13th. I think our meeting is the night before. So I got to double check that date. That might be the 12th actually. Um, and then um, on that same page, I'm sorry, Julie and Allison, you'll see it, but the registration, we'll keep the same price as last year. You guys voted on that. Um, we're going to go Monday, July 3rd, have the third, have Tuesday off. We are going to allow staff this year to, if, you know, because I think we're going to have some issues with people coming, going back, missing the entire Fourth of July weekend because they have to go to work on Monday. I do like the soft opening on Monday. Not, not as crazy traffic, but we're going to we're going to allow staff this year to apply for one session or two. Um, so, you know, we'll give preference to kids that can do all six weeks and be there on Monday, July third, and come back on Wednesday. Um, but it'll be the first time we've ever. We used to do it for the support staff, but we're going to do it for playground staff and give them the option of doing session one, session two, and hopefully have enough staff to vote, which I think we will. We always have enough people. So um, other than that, you know, the rest, some of this, the youth program is pretty much the same. Kevin Dykus is starting up, starting up this in January. Um, we have the sort of basketball league in here that we'll do. We might work on that for the, we were talking about doing that health market fair day also last year, but maybe the day after. So it's not so crazy. Um, you know, we have, that's, is that for kids entering grade three? Um, that's, right. that's right, right? Because grade entering grade two is too young, right? Uh, so kids that will be yep. entering grade Rising, yep, rising, rising grade 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 grade. Grade. Okay. Um, So yeah, kids that just get out of secondary. We have the, uh, just for your sake, Allison, we have the RISE, Rec Center, Ground Level. Change all the keys on the outside. So kids yeah. Club. So um, they can get in from any direction. And then the only thing we're going to add still to the page is that we're, the orgs have been going great. The CMI orgs have been going pretty much every day now since after Thanksgiving. So um, we do have to put in that use fourth sale uh, on here. Um, and then just have to change the wording a little bit. We are going to do that. We do a week of January, or well, the week of January, uh, I think it's 10th. We go up there, middle school lunch to promote extreme. The next day we do deer hair lunch to, promote, to do extreme, and then the next day we do the job fair, um, and then we do the registration to middle school extreme that night, that on Thursday night. So that'll be all, all backed up. Um, still working on before twenty before COVID hit, we were going to do an open house for parents for <coughs> staff that 
the one time we allow parents to ask these questions about their kids' employment. So we might bring that back where we are. Uh, I'll just be there and, and tell parents this, you know, if you want to ask about a job for your child, this is it. You can come in, but you, you, it's your child's job to do come in for the application and reapply. I am going to open up the reapplication process for all last year's staff on 17th because the applications are due by February 17th. So I'll give them two months to, to reapply. Uh, it's one thing I have on the agenda, and I don't want to push it too much, is talk about goals and objectives. Um, they are required for my budget information. It hasn't been posted yet, so it could probably reach in January, but I want to share with you guys what we presented last year. Um, and it's the, the mission statement on that first page, the board of committees that we deal with, and then what I presented last year, prior year accomplishments and goals for coming year. So that goals for coming year is actually what, what we're in for, should be accomplished this year. Um, and it's sort of, we return to full sort of programming. Um, so we're gonna work on marketing sponsorship. Our, the one thing from this road race, and I got to talk to Jack and Ron Ford about is that we're doing, their share of certified loans are gonna help us drive the funds across Iraq. So we're just gonna need a couple of checks from that help pay it to get a PO box, get a bank account, and then start the process. And then we'll start running golf tournaments and making money for both of us. You know, starting next fall. Um, I did include in here another page that for goals and accomplishments. You know, I just, I just gotta go through it. Um, it's sort of in line with what we did before. You know, we're going into fiscal year. 24. So I got a, they're sending me in my latest report in 23, which is what we're in right now. Uh, and I did include, you'll see some other this is pages from the, this, the report that comes out. Uh, the next level, like where it says 112, 113, 114, 115, that's actually from the town report in 22. Uh, not to race through it, but I did, we had a couple, two boys that were helping us in the fall at the rec center as a National Honor Society project. So I, part of the project was to make a presentation for us from their, they worked, Sammy Greg and Nick Iantosco. So they, they, were, they worked every Tuesday and Thursday for over two, almost two months, you know, volunteering for us. And they put together a slideshow, but I'm gonna, I just like to have some edit opportunities on it. I just to clean up a little bit, but, um, you know, they, they took some great photos. You know, just, I just gotta add some more. Things that I could do, and they we even mentioned the homework assistance, which we don't like to offer, say too loud because you don't want them going home with the wrong answer. Uh, but they look like they were studying hard here. Um, so, so we're gonna actually, and the boys are gonna make a presentation to the the middle, all the middle school classes, and make this presentation to the whole, the whole assembly, try to get the numbers up. Um, we did, you know, we had the jump the jukebox. And we're gonna promote the jukebox more here. Uh, I did reach out to the barrel and they gave us a 10% coupon for all our members. So they, they've all, we're making all brand new IDs in the last two weeks with the kids' faces. And on the back, it says a 10% discount, but they need their ID. Um, then I reached out to the bus company and they're dedicating a bus to us, bus four for the winter. And the kids need, you know, can take the bus right to the rec center. Hopefully not overload it. Uh, I think that's the smallest bus load. They said 20. Uh, and it's a quick, Four stops to get to the rec center. So, what efforts um, are you making to get more females? There? Yeah, that's on the list too. Yeah, okay. Um, we had a good group. You know, today we had 26 kids here. I think 26. I think I looked at the, uh, uh, the count. And there was half, over half a dozen girls, which is great. Because uh, I knew half days are big. So, but uh, we want to promote this barrel thing because um, they're going, like I said, they can do that and they need their ID to get on the bus too. Um, so, we're going to promote the ID more. Yeah, I just want to. We did get a. I don't usually give this to you guys, but we've got another thousand dollars from the cultural council. For they usually give us always a thousand to anywhere from 750 to 1250. <clears throat> so we've got another thousand just, just recently. Um, and like I said, department goals, if you guys just want to think about it, because it, it wasn't, I thought it was going to be due in January, but they haven't done the, the presentation to me to get to just try to hand it in. So uh, and last year, one that was not already produced with that one that they asked us to send, to send information to. So just think about it. What's anything on your list that he wants to do, or you know, we could talk next meeting. Uh, 
I used up way too much of my time, so I know you, some of you guys got to leave soon. Um, this, I guess, are you have any reports or? Um, yeah, let's get there. Um, do you have anything from the harbor? How did that thing do on the wharf? Oh, well, the, uh, was it on there? I thought it was supposed it did, to be. It did pass. It did pass. It did pass. It was a lot longer than I think it was made tonight. I, I, was. Hour. I was, yeah. 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 I saw him. I saw him vote around nine o'clock. So what? That's a whole hour. Yeah, the discussion. Yeah, so um, that was the biggest thing. I've been working on that, getting that bylaw. Um, we actually have a, a meeting uh, in the last month. So. I know. I, I watched the second meeting last night, and, um, and Jack Drake did announce that he, he reached out to sit with the day after. I <coughs> said. Yeah, this is the way Coasa voted, but let's work together. So let's work together. <laughs> so and that's I know that's what they're talking about. They, I like a lot of people worried about lawsuits and litigation from Citra, but the goal is to try to make it work with Citra. Um, Jeff, Jeff, I'm so sorry. I couldn't hear your update on the harbor. Could you just say it in a couple sentences, real quick? Uh, yeah, most of the work has been uh, around getting the, the bylaw into the special town meeting warrant, which it did, and it was passed. Um, we haven't had a meeting of the Harbor Committee officially in the last month, so I'll, uh, I'll give an update after the next meeting. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, Julie, do you stay for the whole thing? Or do you, um, you stay until the end? Yes, I did. I thought it would be rude if I stormed out after my petition failed. <laughs> What were your thoughts about it, about the Harbor thing? Um, I, I felt as though I didn't have enough information to vote on it. Um, I, it's, it's difficult for me to comment on it because I don't know enough about it. It concerned me that some people raised uh, the idea that we were talking about passing a bylaw that would affect Situate's property or their real estate. And that concerned me a little bit. I don't know if that's true or not, but it was enough for me to say, huh, I don't know enough about this to vote. Uh, but I thought the discussion was um, lively and really interesting. And I definitely see both sides of the argument. I just, I'm not educated on the topic enough to, to be able to say more than that. Um, John, what, did, what did you guys all think about it? I think you might have been the only one that was there all night. <laughs> sorry, sorry, say that again. I think you were the only person that stuck through the whole hour. I caught the very end of it on, on TV. So, but, uh, Jeff, I guess is it obviously good for the town, right? What's your position on it? From the um. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a um, an interesting way to go about it to dig up this bylaw from the fifties, and you know I don't think it's ultimately going to carry the day. It's going to wind up in court somewhere, um, but you know I, I think any kind of evidence we can find that you know that intent was there is is going to help the cause. I think. Um, there's, you know, there's, I can, uh, I can maybe share some emails. There was interesting back and forth. Tim um, Davis had sent an email around, you know, uh, asking folks to attend the meeting and to, to vote in favor of it. And then uh, Jack Buckley came back with a, another opinion around sort of the, the fact that the original bylaw in 1953, I think it was, wasn't really intended for that purpose. It was a, an entirely different, um, you know, commerce reason for the, the purpose of the bylaw to begin with. So um, you know I, I I don't I don't think that ultimately that vote is gonna you know determine the, the future of the harbor in one way or another but um, I supported it. I, I said that you know it's a step in the right direction to try and find some sort of historical context for the decision we're trying to make. So that's about all I think. Say that. Okay. John, anything on open space? 
Not a ton. Uh, we're not meeting this month. I think we'll be back next month. Um, and then we'll have a couple of folks attending that one. Um, the new grant coordinator, right? Is that Montana? Is that right? is that right? Yeah. Okay. It's, she's, a, it's a dual position, right? But it's not yeah, right. with Hingham, right? Okay. Um, and she's coming in. They're talking about a town wide compost initiative. Um, so she's going to attend that meeting next week and hopefully um, share some good information there. Also, the president of the Sand Beach Association is going to be attending. I just, you know, but keeping, keeping that um, space clean. And then someone else is trying to get a recycling program going in Milliken, but kind of getting running into mutual barriers to contamination and costs and things like that. So that didn't seem like it was going anywhere. Um, my notes on the Beachwood playground um, vote um, sort of felt out of date by the time I got there. Um, uh, I think the word that was thrown around was convoluting the process. Um, but um, you know, it sounds like there's a plan for the spring, so no problem. Actually, before I forget, that was the other square that we're doing a square for Beachwood playground. That Corey Evans is involved with that, is Monica Morris and John Sarah. So I reached, I reached out to them, Corey and Sarah today. I said, just give me a blurb. Because we actually have a, I think you guys approved the last meeting, a spot on our website for people to donate yeah. money to the Beachwood. So that should be this, this year. Sarah Morris, Mary Bean, and Corey have been working on a little blurb here to help you know, fundraise for that. So, um, um, Ted, can you clarify for me, are, are the plans to just fix up the current playground or to go for the entire, I can't remember the amount, maybe 240,000 to redo the entire playground. I think it's to do the whole thing, put in place rubber, all new pieces of equipment. Um, but that was originally going to be voted on <coughs> by this week, right? Yeah. And then it yeah. was of course to the spring. To the spring. I, mean, I think um, my concern about put in place rubber is if they don't put some kind of shade structures on there, you won't be able to get on it for a couple of hours. I mean, that one place rubber is without shade is not a good combination. It'd be too hot. Um, they say the turf, you know, it's worse than the turf, you know, a turf field very hot. But um, I mean, I, I don't think, I know Michelle mentioned that the state's stopping the um, wood chips, but my contacts say that they had heard that. So, you know, we had a proposal about five years ago when the ADA issue came up where it's like a mat. Process that goes around the entry points of all the pieces um, with which is underneath it. And I, I reached out to he's going to be a quote for us that I can present to Michelle and say, You might want to look at this. Awesome. Uh, it might be a lot cheaper. Because um, we might need it across the street too. Because we're going to do something. They need, we need wood chips. We also need ADA, ADA access around it. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a black map with holes in it. So it Um, Allison, anything from Safe Harbor? Nothing. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Yes, I blame you, Allison. I'm just a big contributor here tonight. That's all. Yes, please. Allison, didn't I see something on the warrant um, about money uh, from a settlement and the money from the settlements going to Safe Harbor? Or did anybody else hear about that? So I had heard about that, but I think that they were waiting on that until they had an actual dollar amount of what mm. would be received. Oh, okay. Got it. Because I heard Safe Harbor and I thought, oh, that's great. I didn't know what it, how much it was for. Very good. Anybody else on the table? Any other topics? Anything, Derek, any questions? No, no, okay. good. Yeah. Program looks good. With you, didn't, you didn't hear the word pickleball once, so that worked out pretty good. <laughs> no, we already had that conversation. Yeah. I just started playing that a lot. I enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> I just. Well, I told Derek, I think we be in the wrong. I told Derek. The body. <laughs> that there were the issues with the, the noise, and we should definitely have a soundproof <laughs> fencing between his house and pickleball. The house. That does. <laughs> Uh, tanging noise. It's like diff different from you know, tennis, from tennis ball. I told I told tennis I don't mind the noise of the tennis and the pickleball. It's kind of like living next to a resort or on a resort. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, I think actually what you were saying with uh, 
privacy or the sound screen. I, uh, I think you're referring to like the windscreen that you yeah. see around most. A little more thicker though, so it have some of the you know, soft muscle mm -hmm. noise by up. I think that's right there. I think that benefit the players as well, especially yeah. over windier days. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The angle of the wind sometimes you know, it comes in a different direction. It drives, I think that that court drives it immediately after it runs strong because there's so much wind up there. So try to absorb these. It's good sun. It's next. That's that's it. They want it. <laughs> User fees. Every, <laughs> every old town that goes up there. User fees. There's a place in uh, right off of 53. Pick, it's pickles. called Pickles. Yep. yep, they're killing it. Pickles. Yep. There's actually yeah, some big national chains that are growing this one called Chicken and Pickle. They've been actually growing all the time. So, really? Yeah. It's, it's, they serve beers along with chicken. Uh, chicken beers and pickles. Pickle? Pickle size. Yeah. yeah. Pickles, yeah. Pickle size they do some stuff for Taco Bell. So, like, sometimes those things come up and they're some better than that. Those people want to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Soon, right? Little chicken, chicken wings. <laughs> yeah. You're in Pickle Bell. You have a place with a pickle license. So, what's the pickles? We got a call recently about back throwing and like a license in Hannah. They, they mistakenly called me because I Ryan there's a Ryan oh, Walsh with the ABCs. Hand hand. Yeah, Ryan Walsh. I guess there's a Ryan Walsh with the ABCC. Yeah. And uh, Hannah was people reached out to Ryan and they got forwarded to me. Like, yeah, wrong guy. That's like, <laughs> a good deal with back throwing and look up and do the same. Yeah, Somerville. Yeah, Somerville. That's actually really big too. Yeah. It's growing and in a certain sense. booze. Oh. Yeah, that's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good sponsorship yeah. opportunities yeah. for a surgical yeah. practice, huh? Yeah. 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 Orthopedic yeah. surgeons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So you know now, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's all kinds of activities. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Stop it. It's huge. It's the entire underside. Of that. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. But yeah. Let's, we'll, we'll take it. One moment. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. So motion to adjourn at 8.04. Second. All those in favor. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, Allison. Aye. Billy. Aye. Hun. Aye. Jeff. Aye. Jack. Yes. Katie. Aye. Aye. Okay. So Aye. next meeting is Wednesday, January 11th.